Yep, that's a car engine. Okay, so I don't know a whole lot about car engines, but I do know a bit more about the JVM. And on this episode of Road to JDK 21, we're gonna be looking at the changes between JDK 17 and 21, including a big change to the Z garbage collector. With that, let's jump right in. Far too long to cover in this video. It receives considerable attention from the GC team. Generational GDC is arriving with JDK 21. With every release, the engineers that work on the JDK use the opportunity to tweak, refactor, or even rewrite portions of the code base to improve performance. The story from JDK 17 to 21 is no different with a list of resolved issues in the Java bug system far too long to cover in this video. What does a sum impact of all these changes look like in practice? Well, in this case, it's actually a bit of a mixed bag particularly if you're coming from JDK 17 and are keeping it up to date, which of course you are doing, right? So to start with the bad news first, it does look like there might be small regressions in footprint and startup. Though, on the other hand, throughput does look a bit better as measured by the spec JBB 2015 benchmark with gains between five and 15%. For my own testing that I did on my own personal machine, a 2019 MacBook Pro using a simple Spring Boot application the performance comparisons I mentioned earlier between 17 and 21 track with a slightly larger footprint and slightly slower startup. Though I didn't have a great way to measuring throughput. Hold on, before we go any further, we need to have a discussion about performance. All right, so performance is a somewhat difficult topic to cover and even more so to do it honestly. To start with, there is no singular concept of performance. When talking about performance, there's three major metrics we're usually concerned with throughput, latency, and memory footprint. Though there are some other metrics, for example, startup. Farther, Java quite famously works across multiple operating systems, write once, run anywhere. While Java will run just fine on Linux, Mac, and Windows, the underlying operating system and even CPU architecture can impact performance. And on top of all of this, how a performance test is designed and executed can dramatically impact results. Providing a large heap probably means less memory pressure and thus less GC activity. How long a test is run would impact how much it benefits from code optimizations provided by the JIT. All this to say, there is no single easy way describing performance improvements between JDK 17 and 21, so that's often why I provide ranges. All right, so let's get back to the video. Part of the reason the performance improvements are a bit mixed is that a decent amount of the performance fixes have been backported to JDK 17. While the performance improvements might be minus for JDK 21, keep in mind these benefits come for free when upgrading to JDK 21. You don't have to refactor or rewrite your applications to get these performance improvements. And of course, these changes compound, so if you're moving from JDK 11, 8, or before, you will see an even more significant performance improvement. On the subject of upgrading to JDK 21, Nikolai did an episode of Road to JDK 21 on upgrade hurdles. Be sure to check it out. While general performance improvements might be only modest, there are some specific use cases that did see more substantial gains. Crypto, no, not cryptocurrency, but crypto algorithms for encrypting and decrypting data did see some significant performance gains between JDK 17 and 21. Cha Cha 20, Cha -cha 20 Poly 1305 seeing the biggest benefit with high double digit to even well into triple digit improvements depending upon platform and architecture. There was also significant refactoring done to the Java core libraries classes. Per Mindborg actually published an article about this all the way back in January of 2023 detailing these changes. Primarily, the refactor improved how Java handled primitive value conversions to external representations. The classes most directly benefiting from this would be object input stream, object output stream, object stream class, and random access file, which ultimately means serialization has gotten significantly faster. Be sure to check out Per's article if you're interested, link in the description. Unlike some other Java developer advocates, I actually collect my garbage, fix the problem. Which reminds me, we need to talk about garbage collectors. 
Before we cover changes to the individual garbage collectors, let's first cover a change that impacts all garbage collectors, string deduplication. String deduplication was first introduced with the G1 garbage collector back in JDK9 with JEP192. String deduplication was added because about a quarter of the typical Java heap are strings, and about half of those strings are duplicates. In simplest terms, while doing its work, the GC could check if its string is a duplicate value and reassign it towards a single memory address. With JDK18, this behavior has been ported over to the GGC parallel and serial garbage collectors. String deduplication can be enabled with plus use string deduplication. The G1 garbage first garbage collector has been the default garbage collector on Hotspot since JDK9. As a result, it receives considerable attention from the GC team and has seen several key updates. G1 region size can now be set up to 512 megabytes, previously it was 32. This can be helpful for reducing memory fragmentation on applications that work with a lot of large objects. G1 now uses a single mark bitmap instead of two, which can save about 1.5% of heap space. How G1 calculates concurrent refinement has been updated, which should result in improved throughput. As a result of these changes and others over the past four releases, there has been a few changes to how to tune G1GC and JDK21. For example, the concurrent refinement change means that these VM arguments have been deprecated and are now no ops, which will produce a warning message and they will likely be removed in the future. Be sure to check out the GC tuning guide for more details on these tuning changes and also Thomas Schultz's blog for more details on some of these changes covered in this section. Links in the description. So compared to G1GC and GTC, which we'll cover later, relatively little has changed with the parallel and serial GCs. This is expected as these GCs are, along with being very mature, are also in maintenance mode. The most noteworthy change to the serial and parallel GCs outside of string deduplication is improved CDS support, which should help improve startup performance. Don't know what CDS is? I have a Stack Worker episode on that topic. Last, but definitely not least, is the GGC garbage collector, Java's newest garbage collector. GDC focuses on scalability and low latency, able to support up to 16 terabyte heaps while maintaining sub millisecond pause times. If you're not yet familiar with CDC, but want to learn more, you know what? I have a Stack Walker episode on that topic. GDC actually saw the biggest change we'll be covering in this video as it's now a generational garbage collector, which is covered in JEP 439. To help cover this topic, I reached out to my colleague, Eric Osterlund. My name is Eric Osterlund and I work in the, in the GC team in the Java platform group here at Oracle. You might be wondering, what is a generational garbage collector? Here, Eric can provide a much better explanation than I can provide. A generational collector is a collector that's logically splitting the heap into two different parts called generations, the young generation and the old generation. The generational hypothesis is basically a commonly uh, observed pattern in Java applications that objects tend to have a short lifetime and the implication of that is that they tend to young, uh, die young. The idea is that if you start allocating objects in a young generation and only if they survive long enough uh, for a number of young collections they move over, we call it promotion, to the old generation. This way you end up having a lot of garbage in the young generation and a lot less garbage, more live stuff in the old generation. This way you get um, a more profitable garbage collection in the young generation, which helps saving memory and CPU um, due to garbage collection. Why did GDC make the switch? Why not just stay a single generational garbage collector? We know from experience that um, for some workloads, when you have a lot of uh, long-lived objects and high allocation rates, you need uh, generations to keep up. 
Um, we always knew that from the start, so it was more more of a, um, a priority question that we try to solve the latency problems first and do that really well and then think about shipping a generational version that can compete with, with uh, other collectors in, in memory and CPU utilization as well in these type of workloads. Generational GDC is arriving with JDK21. If you're interested in using it, you will need to set plus use GDC and plus Z generational. If you don't set the second JVM arg, then the JVM will default to using single gen GDC. Eventually the plan is to make generational GDC the default, but exactly when that happens isn't certain yet. We already have received some feedback from customers on generational GDC as well. We have received some feedback um, from people using generational GDC that have been very successful doing that in workloads where you do indeed have uh, long-lived objects um, and high allocation rate. And an example of such a workload um, is when you have a, an LRU cache but still a high allocation rate in the young generation. And there had, it has paid off exceptionally well. Still, despite the many positives of switching to Gen ZDC, I would still recommend setting GC logging and using JFR in profile mode when initially making the switch to Gen ZDC to both capture quality data if you do run into any unexpected issues, as well as help to compare performance between other garbage collectors. If you do run into any issues, we'd love to hear from you. So that's it for this episode of Road to JDK21. JDK21 is an exciting release, and if you're interested in learning about all the tool changes coming with JDK21, check back in on Wednesday when Anna will be covering those changes. If you like this video, share it with your friends. If you don't like this video, share it with your enemies. If you have any questions, leave a comment. But until next time, happy coding!